Hello friends, I am Dr. Aniket Pavnoji and you are watching Basic Chemistry. Welcome to the next part of Chemistry of Transition Elements. First of all, I request you to subscribe my channel and also hit the bell icon to get the notification of my new videos. Let's start the video. So far in transition elements, we have seen electronic configurations of D block elements, variable oxidation states and also ability to form complexes. In this video, we will see melting and boiling points of transition elements, density, ionization enthalpy and color of transition elements. Let's begin with melting and boiling points. The melting and boiling points of transition elements are generally very high and are above 1173 Kelvin compared to those of S block elements which have in the range of 300 to 400 degree Kelvin. In case of transition elements, zinc, cadmium and mercury which are actually non-transition elements because their T orbital or N-1 shell is completely filled and they have low melting points. Apart from these three elements, other elements they have vacant T orbitals, unpaired electrons, they show strong metallic bonding and thus they have high melting and boiling points. Let's move to the density. Density formula is mass upon volume and in general transition elements have higher densities. When we see the transition series, particularly 3D, 4D, 5D, in case of 5D transition series or the elements which are after lanthanide series, due to lanthanide contraction, these elements they have almost same size as that of 4D transition series. In fact, most of the elements of 4D and 5D transition series, they are called as chemical twins. Now when we go from top to bottom, for example, in case of titanium, then zirconium and then hafnium, the size should goes on increasing but due to lanthanide contraction, the size of hafnium is almost same as that of size of zirconium. Now mass increases but size almost remains same. That is how when we go from top to bottom, the densities of 4D and 5D elements are very high. Let's move to the ionization enthalpy of transition elements. We know that ionization enthalpy is the energy required to remove last loosely bound electron in the outermost shell in its gaseous state. If we see the ionization enthalpies of D block elements, in case of scandium, the first ionization enthalpy that is to remove the first electron, the energy required is 632.6 kJ per mole. If we have to remove the second electron as the nuclear charge increases and the number of electrons have reduced after the removal of first electron, to remove the second electron becomes very difficult because all the protons pull the remaining electrons more towards nucleus. That is how second ionization enthalpy is 1245.1. Similarly, the third ionization enthalpy is 2450.6. This is in case of first, second and third ionization enthalpies. But if we see the first ionization enthalpies of all transition elements, when we move from left to right, as the nuclear charge increases, it pulls the NS2 electron, that is the outermost electron more closer to it. And that is how the ionization enthalpy should increase from left to right. When we move from left to right in case of first transition series, from scandium to zinc, as we know that the electrons are added into the N-1 D shell, that is in the inner shell. And as the electrons are added into the inner shell, these electrons exert shielding effect. And when we move from left to right, the NS2 that is the outermost electrons are shielded more and more. That is how ionization enthalpy from left to right increases very slowly. When we move from top to bottom, the atomic size increases. As the size increases, the ionization enthalpy should decrease. When we proceed from top to bottom in group 3b, Ionization values decrease as scandium to yttrium to lanthanum. However, in most of the remaining groups, the ionization enthalpy increase in the same direction. That is the ionization energy in the elements lying after lanthanum in the third series are greater than those of corresponding elements in the first and second transition series. This happens because elements following lanthanum that is from cerium to lutetium in the inner transition series the 4f orbitals are completely filled and hence cannot shield the nucleus effectively. Now due to this ineffective or poor shielding of the nucleus by 4f electrons, the elements lying after lanthanum in the third transition series, 
have greater effective nuclear charge acting on the ns2 electrons therefore the ionization energy of the elements following lanthanum that is after lanthanum in the third transition series are higher than those of corresponding elements in the first and second transition series if you see the last column that is zinc cadmium to mercury they have the highest values of ionization energy this is due to the extra stability associated with them due to completely filled off n-1 d shell and also ns orbitals when we compare these values of d block elements to that of s and p block elements we always find that these values lie between s and p block elements here along with the ionization enthalpy we have to consider the oxidation states also transition elements with lower oxidation state they form ionic compounds whereas those with higher oxidation states form covalent compounds let's understand the relation between ionization energy and stability of metal in a given oxidation state when we convert nickel to nickel 4 that is after losing four electrons the four ionization enthalpy summation is 11.29 into 10 raised to 3 kilojoules per mole if we observe the same in case of platinum to platinum 4 the total ionization enthalpy is 9.36 into 10 raised to 3 kilojoules per mole from these values we can understand platinum has less value of ionization enthalpy in plus 4 oxidation state compared to that of nickel it indicates the compounds of platinum are more stable in plus 4 oxidation state and we know that k2 platinum cl6 is the compound that exist however such a compound does not exist in case of nickel Let's move to the color of transition elements. If we see this table, those elements which have zero unpaired electron in the d orbital, these elements are colorless. Other elements which have some unpaired electrons, they have particular color. But color of the compound is not directly related to the number of unpaired electrons. Let's see the reason. If we consider a particular complex where the metal is at the center and it is surrounded by the ligands, for example, d1 electronic configurations. There are 5d orbital and one of the orbital contains one electron. When a complex is formed between the metal and the ligands, these 5d orbitals split into two levels: lower triply degenerate t2g level and upper doubly degenerate eg level. By Afwa principle, this unpaired electron goes into the t2g orbital. Now when the light falls on this substance, this unpaired electron absorbs the energy and gets transferred from t2g orbital to eg orbital. as both these orbitals that is t2g and eg are d orbitals this transition from t2g to eg is called as dd transition and among all the transition elements the transition elements which absorb the radiation from visible region of the spectra are appear to be colored all those elements which absorb from ir or that is from infrared to ultraviolet region that is of higher energy these compounds are not colored or colorless as such color of the compound depends on many factors let's see one more factor for example here i am taking the example of cobalt sulfate when it is dissolved in water it gives a pink color compound cobalt h2o6 2 plus if in the same compound or in the same beaker if we add hcl it turns into a blue color solution of cocl42 minus if we look at both the compounds Cobalt H2O6 2 plus has octahedral geometry, whereas CoCl4 2 minus has a tetrahedral geometry. Now, cobalt atomic number 27, its electronic configuration is argon 3d7 4s2. In both the cases, cobalt H2O6 2 plus and CoCl4 2 minus, the oxidation state is calculated as plus 2. Now, in plus 2 oxidation state, the two electrons are removed from the 4s orbital, and cobalt 2 plus is 3d7. In case of d7 electronic configuration the seven electrons are placed in the 5d orbital now in case of cobalt h2o6 2 plus that is an octahedral environment the 5d orbital split into two levels lower t2g and upper eg whereas in case of cobalt tetrachloride 5d orbital split into two levels lower lying eg orbital and upper lying t2g orbital this is due to the tetrahedral environment in octahedral environment ligands attack along the axis and exert more effect on the eg orbital whereas in case of tetrahedral geometry the ligands attack in between the axis and exert more effect on t2g orbitals because t2g orbitals are in between the axis and eg orbitals are along the axis now when we distribute the electrons in case of octahedral geometry 
as H2O is a weak ligand, the seven electrons are placed in this way and there are three unpaired electrons. In the similar way, in case of COCl42- there are again three unpaired electrons. Now in both the cases, the number of unpaired electrons are same. But in case of octahedral complexes, the splitting between the T2G and EG is more. Also the T2G orbitals are lower line. In case of tetrahedral complexes, EG orbitals are lower line and the splitting between the T2G and EG is less compared to octahedral complexes. So this is also one of the factor why the color of the compound is different. In all, color of the transition elements are related to first is presence of unpaired d orbital electron, second is d d transition, third is nature of groups or the ligands which are associated with the central metal atom, whether these ligands are strong ligands or weak ligands. Next is the geometry of the complex, whether it is tetrahedral, octahedral or square planar also. So these are the various reasons for the different colors exhibited by transition metals. In this video, we have learned more properties of the transition elements. In the next video, we will learn magnetic properties of the transition elements and also we will see how to calculate a magnetic moment. If you like my video, click on like, do share and subscribe my channel. If you want to ask something, mention it in the comment box. Also hit the bell icon to get the notification of my new videos. And keep watching Basic Chemistry. Thank you.